When I was growing up, we had uh, an event that uh, everybody's pretty much familiar with in your audience, and uh, there was a coup that took place. And, uh, uh, you know, our president was assassinated. That's a traumatic event that everybody alive at that point in time was uh, scarred and marred. And one of the things you find with victims of abuse or people that have had some horrible tragedy happen at an early age in life is that um, it's very hard for them to get past this childhood trauma. Um, the uh, even when they're adults, you'll find a lot of times that they're still kids inside. They haven't been able to get past that event. Uh, to mature, to grow. And so, um, in fact, in uh, MK, MK Ultra programming, uh, it's trauma based. Um, and uh, so, by traumatizing a child, they then become manipulable, that fractures their personality. And so, this traumatizing event for us as a nation, we're really kind of a MK Ultra victim as a nation of people because of this assassination that we got to see live on TV and repeated uh, probably in everybody in this audience's lifetime. You've seen the limo going down the street and the event dozens, if not even hundreds of times. And it's it mars your soul somehow. It mars you in a way that's hard to get past, especially if that event has not been brought to some kind of real resolution. So uh, the other side of that coin is, is if, if you know that justice has taken place and you've got the truth, then maybe you can move on.
if a murder occurred in the land and the murderer wasn't found, there was a curse on the land until that murderer was um, discovered, revealed, determined, and then taken into custody and justice done. And uh, then the land would be cleansed of the evil and the curse would be lifted. George H. W. Bush, that's right, former president and former CIA director, who's already been linked years ago through a declassified document that shows that he was involved in the investigation of JFK, which of course he denied and said that it must be a different George Bush. And years later, when questioned about it again, he refused to comment on it entirely. And although George H. W. Bush would become the director of the CIA 13 years after the death of JFK, at the time of JFK's death, he was indeed a top-level CIA agent. In fact, even briefing President Dwight Eisenhower, who of, of course was the president before JFK. Take the so-called stretcher bullet that was found on the gurney of Governor Conley, which of course was injured in the assassination event of JFK. This bullet went through two people, a neck and two bones, and somehow is miraculously untouched. And when you compare the same bullet to other bullets found in this event, you can see the dramatic difference. And they want us to believe that somehow this bullet was found on a stretcher with zero damage and zero blood on it at all. In other words, somebody planted it who had access to that hospital. What Dwight Eisenhower, the president right before JFK, his very last speech before leaving the White House was literally about outing the military industrial complex that various powers that are able to remain anonymous in the intelligence community were able to seize power that far exceeded the constitution and the powers of the presidency. Most people are completely unaware that JFK made a speech just three months into his presidency, just three months, not even, after Dwight Eisenhower's speech. And in the speech, he discusses secret societies and the very grave danger and ambitions for those who want increased security. And this ties right into the reason or a motive, a significant motive of why the powers that be in the intelligence communities or the military industrial complex would want to kill JFK. This letter that you got from JFK, September 9th, uh, August 19th, July 19th, 99. Your father passed away when? Right. In July. JFK Jr., that's exactly correct. He, he just, I mean, it must have been the last thing, one of the last things he did. He was a great guy. He was a friend of mine. Dear Donald, I read over the weekend of your father's passing, and I just wanted to drop you a note. No matter where you are in life, losing a parent changes you. My condolences to you and your family, sincerely, John Kennedy. This was a tragedy that he died because he had so much going. He was he was a fabulous guy. I mean, he was really, truly a handsome, wonderful, great, bright guy.
In Dallas, Texas, three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time.
I got real shook up about it. He stayed in the Secret Service just a couple more years before retiring to Waynesville. Nightmares of Dallas to blame. I think that that would give me ulcers. He died two years after this interview.